hottest states in the country. We have a high geothermal gradient because we're located in the area where the crust is extending, the river and rip, where the mantle is up well in the long zones like the Hamer's River. Here we are at Soda Dam Spring. This is a unique area where hot fluids are rising out. And in the fluids are geothermal tracers. Uh, we're studying the gases, such as the CO2 bubbling out here. Um, we're, we also study uh, the trace gas helium. And helium-3 is indicative of mantle contributions. And this is important to us because we're studying water flow pathways and deep fluids mixing with meteor fluids. So we're able to look at the value of the strontium 87, 86 ratio, and that tells us that tells us a lot about the flow pathways that our water is taking on the way up to the surface, and can be a key indicator in if this water has been affected by any geothermal process. Our studies apply multiple geochemical tracers, chemical constituents we find in the water, to understand hydrologic flow paths and water quality impacts. The geothermal springs contribute a very high proportion of in-stream flow on times of the year where the Haymans River is flowing at a very low level. We're here on top of Soda Dam, which is a Fisher Ridge style travertine deposit. We just measured some CO2 flux down there around the diffuse areas, and right now we're on the two intersecting structures right here where we do see elevated CO2 flux. Now, what we do with our CO2 flux after we measure it is we multiply it by the area, which gives us the annual total flux of the area. And what we're coming out with around the Valles Caldera is a annual CO2 flux of around 54 megatons per year. So evidently we are in a dormant magmatic system that is still producing a massive amount of CO2 into the atmosphere. And it gives us some constraints for geothermal activity, geothermal system. So this is an example here at Soda Dam of the ways in which the projects can overlap and we can have connections between the geothermal systems and our bioavailable colleagues. So I'm sampling the biofilms that are on the outside surface of Soda Dam. It's wet, drippy, and I'm interested in the algal communities and the microbial communities. I'm sampling for the algae. These algae have adapted to be living in extreme conditions. Just wet, um, high calcium content. You find really interesting diatoms and other algal taxa that may be useful into being developed for algal biofuels. Here in the Hamas, uh, the heat source is primarily from the volcanic system. There's a cooling magma chamber at a depth of about five kilometers in the southwest corner of the caldera that provides the heat for this system. We're using a technique called magnetotellurics to investigate the deep structure of the Earth's crust. In magnetotellurics, we, we record two things. We record variations in the Earth's magnetic field using induction coils like this one. And we measure variations in the Earth's electric field using specialized electrodes like these. We record it all in our recorder. In this image, the results of an MT survey are shown over a geologic cross-section. This is a powerful exploration tool, especially for geothermal systems that have no surface expression.